Okay. Hello and welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It is April the 8th, it's 2019, and I'm ill. So there you go. This will be fun. I'll probably burst out coughing any minute. But um, if you're here, please add your uh, name to the uh, attendees list on the hackpad. The link is, I'm just going to put the link in the chat for everyone. Cool. And uh, if you haven't already, then please add your weekly update in the relevant section. Uh, and what happens next is we usually do a round of our weekly updates, where we tell each other what we did last week, uh, what we are blocked on, and what we're going to do next. So, uh, uh, so Jacob is first, but he is not here. Uh, so we will skip over him temporarily, uh, and I guess he'll maybe join at some point later, uh, to Vashko. Um, oh, wait, 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 before we even start that, because Jacob is not here, would someone like to volunteer to take notes today? All right, Volker, thank you very much. Uh, no, Volker, for Volker was first, so there you go. Um, Vashko, it's your go first to give us your update, please let us know what you were doing last week and what you blogged on and what you're doing next. Sure, hey guys. So uh, last week uh, I've been, uh, uh, I've had uh, like all days meetings with uh, uh, Nearform guys regarding the Visual Listing tool. It was like an iterative process of providing feedback and uh, answering doubts about the, all the lp 2 data that they need. Other, other, and kind of related with that, uh, I've been working in the lip 2 p introspection. Uh, I have currently a draft PR with the switch data for uh, of the data model. I will, I need to st still to clean up some code, and it will hopefully be ready this week for a review. Uh, then I I also synced with Jacob in regarding the OKRs for Q2. And uh, uh, I've been uh, trying to help uh, Jacob and Alan with uh, reviews for uh, uh, for enabling the releases for JSLP to be and JSFFS. I'm not currently blocked on anything. And uh, for this week, uh, I I want to add the streams data to the lipid to introspection. Uh, also, I need to review the streams interop pull request uh, from Mantis. Uh, and uh, I will also start doing some work in the sync iterators, I hope. So I will start by uh, defining the, what uh, the interface transport and interface connection would look like. And uh, other than that, I will uh, review again uh, the JavaScript implementation of Gossip Sub as my career reached me today and said that I could give you a new pass. So I will do it. Uh, any questions or? Uh, comments for me? Uh, I just have a comment on the, uh, if you do start the async iterators stuff, um, please talk to me and Dirk about uh, the transport and connection interfaces because we've done a little bit of work on that already um, and it would be good to sync up and get your thoughts. Anyway. So, All right, yeah. I will do it. Thanks. Any other questions for Vashko? All right, uh, Jacob is here now. Hi, Jacob. Would you like to give us your update? You ready? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, so yeah, I spent most of last week continuing to work on uh, JVS IPFS network performance with the DHT on. Um, fixed a slew of issues with the switch that are linked in there. Um, some of the big ones was uh, connection manager. Our connections weren't actually being tracked properly. Um, we were saying that things were disconnected when they weren't actually disconnected because we had multiple connections to them. Um, and this really prevented Connection Manager from be able, being able to do its job because we might have a thousand actual connections, but say we have 200. Um, so that should be fixed. Um, also fix some issues with Liberty P stopping. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, yeah, one of the big things we're working on is an RFC for um, auto dial with JSLIP PDP. Um, and this is kind of to address some stuff with um, connecting to peers, like 
now JSIPFS connects to everything that it discovers, um, and that's not good. We want to avoid that. And so what we're looking at with JSLib P2P is enabling an auto dial that would auto discover when you discover peers, it will auto dial up to the low watermark in the connection manager um, to kind of bootstrap the node that way. And this would attempt to try to solve some problems with bootstrapping and stuff. So if you're interested in that, feel free to pop in there and comment um, in the open PR. Uh, there's a proof of concept in there with that working, but it will need some updates to, to other things in order to, to ship it. Um, other than that, I will continue to work on the uh, JSIBFS network performance with the DHG this week. Um, yeah, any questions for me? All right, if there's no questions for Jacob, uh, let's move on to Volker. Can we have your update, please? Yes, um, so I've worked on the IPLD format stuff. I'm sure I have done something else as well, but I can't recall. So <laughs> that's my only item, um, but I still keep working on it. And uh, so parallel, we, we still do discussions on the next iteration of the API. Um, there's currently lots of discussions going on, um, but we'll see how this goes. Um, and next week, yeah, we'll also work on it, but so the um, format for IPLD protocol buffers is basically done, which probably will make Alex happy. At least he thinks so, because the API is like pretty different, and we'll see how this goes. Um, uh, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> um, uh, because I made some strange design decisions. Anyway, I would discuss with him offline. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all I have. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Any questions for Volker? Probably lots, but we'll talk about it later. Cool. Okay. Uh, moving on. This should be fun. Uh, okay. Um, uh, okay, so I, did, I made a pull request to um, allow the IPNS republisher to shut down a bit quicker. That was got reviewed and merged. Um, we had a contribution from our um, open source apprenticeship with uh, this, uh, I think it's like a placements company called Pest, Pesto. Um, anyway, there's, uh, there's a guy who's been doing a bunch of pull requests and really useful stuff for us. Um, one of them was getting recursive uh, recursive DNS link lookups, which is super rad, so then I reviewed that and merged it. Um, I spent some time with the lib P2P guys last week testing out the DHT in 035. Um, we found that it wasn't really working at all. Uh, and we didn't really know why. And uh, it's sort of in, we need to figure out why. The, the, there's a possible issue might be that um, BitSwap, uh, when when you ask BitSwap for something, it does a, and it finds uh, it finds something. I think it does a cold call, and because of the queuing things we've added to um, the P 2 P, those cold call calls get put on the back of the queue and possibly might not even be called at all. So BitSwap might never actually dial the node that it um, that it needs to dial to get the content. Um, so that's a, just a potential issue that. That, um, I was debugging last week, but um, yeah, that needs more more work. <clears throat> so it means that <clears throat> there is some still a some still some problems for zero thirty five release. Um, and I opened a PR for in, at, against interop for zero thirty five, and that was also not incredibly successful. The performance of exchanging files has dramatic drastically changed for the worst. Uh, so that needs to be figured out as well. And I think that's what um, Jacob was talking about earlier as well. Um, and <clears throat> and then today uh, I submitted a pull request for MDNS discovery interrupt. So this is just a kind of a quick pull request to lippy to be MDNS uh, on the JS side, which uh, allows it to um, discover uh, go uh, lippy to be MD, uh, go, um, Go IPFS nodes uh, and vice versa. Uh, it's, it's basically um, compatible with what Go does, and it does pretty much the same thing. 
I thought it would be really simple, um, just change a few like service tags and, and things. But then I realized that the Go MDNS uh, implementation is, is pretty fun times uh, and it was difficult to debug. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's sort of done. It needs tests adding to it. But um, in lieu of the newer implementation, I thought it best to spend a little bit of time just getting the current implementation to work together because, uh, you know, we don't know when it's gonna when it's gonna change. So ah, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm blocked on zero value five release um, for because of the DHT and the performance problems that I saw in Interop. Um, and so my top my list right now is to get sorted the OKRs for Q two. I mean, not Q one because <laughs> uh, they are not finalised yet. And um, yeah, I've just been ill, so I haven't been able to to kind of put my mind to this. Um, and then uh, I want to figure out what to do with 0.35 release. Um, and I would appreciate your input there. Like, should we, should we wait for these DHT and performance fixtures? Or should I just release 0.35 with the DHT disabled? Or uh, option three, uh, shall we backport some of the existing non-breaking changes to 0.34 and release that instead? Um, maybe we can come back to that at the end of the call or something if we still have time. Um, that's me. Any quick questions? Okay, cool. Uh, let's move on then. It is Alex next. Would you like to share with us your update, please? Hello. So last week, um, all that NPM stuff blew up, uh, which was, you know, quite sad to watch from, from the exterior. Um, and some people on, on Twitter started talking about, oh, wouldn't it be great if we had a distributed version of NPM? Um, and I kind of, like, they started saying, well, actually, the, the, all the D-Web stuff is super slow, so it's not going to solve any of our problems. And I was like, oh, actually, it solves some other interesting problems. Um, and kind of got involved in that conversation. And, and what, it, what came out of it was, oh, yeah, if you add transports here, then we'll think about merging them into NPM. <laughs> cool. So uh, I implemented IPFS and IPNS transports for NPM. Uh, and opened a PR uh, that took most of last week, and it should be super exciting if uh, if it gets merged. Um, so I also uh, opened a PR for that problem with pulling uh, ham shards down via the gateway, um, which I just noticed there have been some comments on. So in the next bit, we'll be yeah fixing that up. Um, I am might be unblocked now on the async await stuff for UnixFS, maybe depending on what Volker has done to the API. Um, but if it's shipped, then that's great uh, and we can fix it. That will be cool. Uh, yeah, so I am going to continue. I started looking at some problems with NPM and IPFS, uh, some really weird slow behavior. I don't know if it's related to how it, how it there's, there are some problems with ham sharding. Uh, it might be related to that. I've just started looking into it. Um, so that's probably going to be me for the rest of the week is tidying up NPM and IPFS issues, talking to Volker about the async await changes in, in IPLD formats. Uh, yeah, and trying to like get this thing merged to book uh, day. That should be fun. Yes, that's me. Any questions? Cool. Cool. Thank you, Alex. Uh, okay, next up we've got uh, Hugo. Would you like to share your update with us, please? Yes. So we had a session trying to debug DHT. Uh, I also did the release of uh, IPFS CTL with some features and fixes. I continued the uh, IPNS research. Uh, we started the um, uh, Slack channel to sync up with um, uh, Adim and the DDC guys, which are also trying to work out the IPNS problem, and we will be um, we will be talking about it so we don't duplicate work and find a good solution for IPNS. I also finished. Um, the last bundle size pull request, removing the IPLE formats for the browser. Uh, I added a bunch of uh, documentation uh, explaining how 
uh, app developers in the browser can add support back and stuff like that. Um, I also fixed um, uh, something in the CLI that came in in a pull request that basically separated the YARX parser to a separate so DLI uh, and also the, with that parser instead of like using the daemon to, to do all the tests. And basically the MFS commands words in the parser uh, were all, only in the CLI file, so I fixed that and also added a safer way to exit the CLI. Uh, basically instead of using finally, yeah, uh, with this pull request, we will use a package called signal exit, which is a little bit safer on forced exits, like kill commands and stuff like that. Like that. I'm blocked on the JSIPFS pull amplex pull request to fix the view support. Uh, and yeah, next I'll continue with IPNS and also uh, I'll be adding support for file and file lists on the, um, on the files command. Any questions? No, nope. cool. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, next up, laying the train tracks. <laughs> uh, Lido, do you wanna do you wanna just talk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, just I I think uh, it's worth mentioning. I managed to run uh, embedded gateway in Brave without. Uh, big modifications to JSIPFS itself, mostly like rearranging code and fixing small pain points where, which were like specific to Node and did not uh, work with proper polyfills added by uh, Webpack and other stuff we use. Uh, so uh, that's quite cool that I'm able to receive the actual payload now. Uh, in past, I was only able to list directories. Now, like loading images, videos work. And while I was doing that, I also fixed uh, streaming in JSAPFS, which did not uh, flash before entire payload was received. Because, like, uh, I think by default, uh, Happy is uh, responding with uh, gzipped payload. So the compressor used uh, by uh, Happy which is our HTTP server in JSAPFS, uh, that compressor uh, did flash only when it received entire payload from uh, IPFS. And I fixed that. So after receiving each chunk from IPFS, there's a small flash to compressor. So streaming works with gzip compression over HTTP, which is cool. Uh, so uh, my, that's more or less, uh, uh, what I've been up to and my plan for this week is basically clean up a lot of code and submit a lot of uh, upstream patches. There's this one uh, draft of uh, HTTP API uh, PR I al already open. I need to like update that because there, there's some small stuff uh, on top of that. Uh, but yeah, that's my update. Any questions for Lido? That's really cool news. Um, I can't wait for your upstream PRs to come along. Um, cool, okay, now uh, we are done with the regular weekly update sections and uh, normally we now move on to the cross-team update section, hooray! Uh, so this is a new section where the where people from other teams that are not that are possibly outside of JS Core can share their wins uh, with with us uh, if they so wish. Um, if you are in a team and you want to share your update, then come and post it here, and we can all hear about it and share the knowledge. Hooray! So uh, first up this week we have Jim. Uh, would you like to share with us your update? Okay, um, so last week um, finished our OKRs for our group. Um, there's only three people in the group, so that wasn't too hard. Um, we're um, Dean and Hugo. Um, we, we set up a private Slack channel to just 
try to get everybody who's interested in moving the IPNS stuff forward. Um, Pedro and Nadine are going to be working full time on it this uh, quarter, um, and Hugo's working on it. So we have a point to coordinate, but we want to. We actually want to have the discussion out in the open, so it's just sort of a temporary Slack channel, to uh, so everybody can decide where to have the conversations next. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, I've been toying around with the uh, magic wormhole, which is sort of a fun utility, which probably a lot of people don't know about, um, which you can, uh, it's for sharing secrets between, uh, generally like um, it's a Python app and you can say, put a secret in a file and share it with somebody and then they have to connect at the same time and then you just give them three, three words and they type it in and then they get the secret on their end. And I figured that would be really clever way to hook together uh, a lot of these uh, peer base um, web apps I'm building where you need to get a secret from one machine to another. So I built a little uh, HTTP uh, API around that because I didn't have one. Um, and I'm integrating that into the peer test app that uh, Juan wrote. So um, that should be hopefully done today. I, I want to get that launched. So. Um, and then the main thing you're going to do this week is uh, dig into test lab. So, um, you know, we have our nice integration tests, but it'd be nice to be able to run them on large numbers of ser servers and uh, the lib P2P team uh, calls working on this thing called test lab. So I tried an earlier version of it, um, but he's got, it's a much more usable state now. So I'm going to dig into it this week. And also peer base is sort of lagging behind on the GS IPFS version. Dirk did some work with that last week, so I want to catch up with that. And I, I'd like to get the latest version going too. And then upcoming, um, we have IPFS camps. I have to look into what I'm going to be presenting there, I think with Lytle. And um, Molly also asked me to look a bit at the IPFS API. And I found a bunch of really interesting projects done in the past that all of you, you guys have worked on. So I'm probably going to be reaching out this week. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Any quick, quick questions for Jim? All right. Uh, and then we have Terry. Yeah, I am really excited to announce that I am not just totally stuck. I'm actually making progress now on this darn files tutorial. So that does mean it's been rescoped, which is part of me feeling like I can just move forward. So you can see we're now focusing just on MFS, and there are two main reasons for that. It used to be that the plan was to make one tutorial about the non-MFS commands, like learn how to use DAG, learn how to do the same stuff like add with files, and then learn how to use MFS with this layer of abstraction on top of it. And the two reasons I'm just focusing on mutable file system now, one is that people have suggested that the order is wrong, that MFS is the beginner friendly thing, even though it's this weird, like not really what IPFS is doing thing. And then DAG and the other file stuff is like more advanced and requires more understanding. But the other more practical reason is that I discovered that blobs aren't supported directly by the non MFS methods, which makes it really hard to teach a lesson on just adding a file because then you also have to teach a lesson on how to turn a blob into something that is actually accepted. And I'd rather not be teaching that in proto school. So Hugo mentioned to me that he has an OKR to make blobs supported by the non MFS commands, which I think is fabulous. So I'm postponing that. Uh, and for now, just focusing on this that I can push through on. So the first couple of lessons here are more just basics about how to interact with the system, but um, we have a, a lesson on write and we have one on uh, LS for right now. And I'm still working through that. So the basic plan for what's inside of the MFS tutorial hasn't changed. It's just that I'm focusing, narrowing in on specifically doing that one. Um, and then I know Alan, uh, yeah, Alan, you were thinking about how this might get used at IPFS camp and hoping that this, the file thing would be done before then. I, I'm hoping you weren't depending on the other <laughs> piece of it also. I don't know what, you know, what Hugo's timeline is on that change, but 
this is the current plan. So I'm, I'm very open to feedback as always, but this is this week right now. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. Adding Bob support shouldn't be too hard. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Terry. Uh, any questions for Terry quickly? You are muted, Owen. I'm muted, I know. <laughs> ah, um, all right, I think we're all done. Uh, there's no other notes here. Um, the only thing, if you've, I, I would like it if you have strong uh, opinions about this, uh, I would like to hear them. Um, uh, and I'm talking about the, what to do with the 035 release. Does anyone have any? Uh, strong feels about it right now. I'm a little bit disillusioned because it has been going on for so long um, And uh, I can't really see an end to it and uh, and I sort of I'm, I'm kind of half leaning right now uh, to just disabling the DHT uh, Sorting it making sure the perf issue is, is um, okay without it enabled uh, and releasing 035 anyway uh, and then pushing the DHT and all of those fixes to the next one, uh, which we've already done once before because we were originally going to release it in 34. So it wouldn't be the end of the world, but um, I kind of thought that it would be nice to get it out in 35. It's sort of a, a nice round number. <laughs> uh, any? I, I'm seeing a lot of nods and stuff. Alex? I just think as a point of order, the head of master should be releasable at all times. Like we shouldn't have you know, code that's in there that stops releases from happening. Like we can have experimental code, you know, but it should be turned off by default. And then when it's ready, it can be turned on. Um, so we can have regular releases without backing lots of stuff up as has happened in this case. So I think, yeah, disabling it, keeping the code in and releasing it disabled is, is completely the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, just kind of to speak to that, I don't, I don't merge things to ever really break master if I can. The the issue with this, uh, with this particular change, was that it it um, we it was passing all of the tests, it was passing all the interrupt tests, um, and uh, it was quite difficult to know that it was. Uh, uh, it was actually failing it unless you had actually properly run it. And to be fair to us, uh, to be fair, we should have run that and figured that out before before it got merged. Um, but uh, that didn't happen. So that's just a learning for next time. Um, but yeah, in general, I totally agree. We want master to be um, uh, yeah releasable at any one given any given point, basically. Um, so yeah. All right, any other comments on that? Or if that's what if that's what the consensus is, then I'm happy to just release it and get it over with. Okay, the DHT is moving into 036 potentially. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well I will I'll get, get on the uh, get on the bike with that then and, and hopefully release it this week. All right. Okay, we're over by we're over time. Thanks for spending all of your time with us, uh, and uh, it's been it's been fun. And I hope to be a little bit better next week and a little, a little less croaky. Um, but until then, uh, have a lovely week and uh, do some awesome IP blessing. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Bye.